name is Henry. Uh, welcome to my home here in uh, West Kendall, Miami, and uh, I'd like to showcase my uh, Elos 160. Elos 160 is uh, approximately 150 gallons or so. It's a uh, it's a European made tank, so the uh, sizes might be a little off. But it, it's it's roughly about five feet long, uh, about 24 inches high and deep. I've always been a fan of the uh, rimless aquariums. Uh, my old uh, cube aquarium that I first started with a couple of years ago was uh, was rimless, and I, I was very fond of uh, of the look. So that's uh, that's kind of what led me to the uh, to this uh, Elos tank. I, I like the uh, the clean look of the of the remnants. As you can see, I have a, a mixed reef, uh, a little bit of uh, LPS and, uh, and SPS, but uh, my main focus is uh, SPS. I, I like the uh, I like the variety. I like the uh, the growth patterns. Uh, I like that it, it, it uh, resembles like a, like a forest uh, in your aquarium. Yet uh, yet the LPS seems to give you that uh, that motion and, and the uh, the movement that uh, that so many people like. So so that's kind of the reason why I went with the mix. But uh, but my main focus is on is on the SPS. I'm I'm not one for uh, knowing many of the names and and uh, and the varieties. I, I I just go with what what looks nice and, and what seems to grow nice in the tank. The reason that my uh, my focus is more on SPS than LPS is uh, I don't think you're ever going to get the growth that you get uh, from uh, SPS coral on, on any type of, of LPS. Yeah, you know you get branching patterns, you get plating. Uh, just the, the growth seems to be so diverse and, and, and so different from tank to tank. Um, growth speeds, uh, just just the way that the, that the, the corals look in your tank. I don't think any LPS coral uh, can can display that type of, of look in your aquarium. I'm a fan of the Millies. Uh, I've got several of them. Uh, I like the uh, I like the polyp extension on them. They they seem to grow very well. The uh, the colors are, are are very diverse in between the uh, the different uh, species. Uh, they, they're kind of uh, they kind of grown on me. I also like the the tenuuses also for the same reason. I, I like the growth patterns and and the color variations are, are so different in between the uh, in between the different species. Tank is currently being eliminated by a trio of uh, Radeon Gen 4 Pros after they made their changes with the uh, with the optics. Uh, was running some uh, Gen 2 Pros before, and I was very happy with them. Uh, Ecotech support's been second to none, and uh, and their products seem to do very well. So uh, I've I've been a big fan since I started. I started with uh, with Radeons when I first set up my first aquarium. I've got a couple of uh, MP40 QDs for flow, upgraded uh, also. Uh, from the regular MP40s, been very happy with that. Uh, good, good movement in the tank, and uh, it seems to keep the uh, the SPS happy. Uh, my return pump is a Vectra M1, also an Ecotech product. Uh, we run the ReefLink to uh, intercommunicate them with uh, with their cloud service, and it seems to be pretty easy to use. And uh, you know, make changes to your uh, schedule settings, or if somebody wants to come over and see the tank, it, it's very easy to just jump on your mobile device and. Uh, and, and make changes, so I, I've been very happy with that. I have a Vertex skimmer. I run uh, filter socks, approximately 150 micron filter socks, and, uh, and pretty much it's as, as filtration goes. Uh, sometimes I'll run some carbon and some GFO. Not all the time. I, I think that it keeps things a little too clean. And uh, when I first uh, started the aquarium, between some bio pellets and, and maybe over filtering, um, I, I think the aquarium was, was too clean and uh, it didn't seem to be uh, heading in the right direction. I also have a, a Neptune, um, Neptune Systems controller, recently upgraded also from the, uh, from the old uh, Neptune controller. Uh, I guess it's, uh, it's kind of like what brings everything together. Uh, without the Neptune controller, I wouldn't be able to run the dosers that I run. Uh, I run a, a dose for uh, for uh, aqua, uh, alkalinity and calcium dosing, and I also run a dose for auto water change. That, that's probably one of the uh, most convenient things that I've added to the aquarium. Uh, when I first started, just like everybody, I used to lug around uh, 
five gallon buckets of water and, and you know I used to do my manual water changes and uh, after reading through several forum posts I was uh, I guess intrigued uh, you know by this idea and, and, and I implemented it in my own house I, I set up a, uh, a uh, saltwater reservoir I mixed my own water and uh, and I used the Neptune to uh, change a, a gallon of water a day I, I guess that's what I have it running at I like the ease of uh, being able to again jump on your mobile device uh, check settings uh, change intervals uh, I've got a breakout box with switches that I use when I mix salt water um, I guess the the apex is like the the heart of, of the system uh, you know I like that it monitors your devices the new apex comes with uh, probes that monitor salinity ORP pH temperature you know it, it's a lot of things that I guess we take for granted because we have it but uh, it definitely helps you I think uh, to keep a, a stable environment. Uh, whenever you do maintenance, you can easily shut things on and off through your Apex. And, and you know, you can create shortcuts and, and, and I guess like uh, quick links that help you to uh, do things uh, like fill your ATO chamber, for example. As far as parameters go, I keep my ALK somewhere between eight and 8.5. Calcium seems to stay between 420 and 440. Um, magnesium is, I think roughly around 1350. Um, the only the only parameter that I am really on top of a lot is is alk. It seems to be that stability is key. Uh, one of the first I, I guess faults that I did uh, when I first started the aquarium was I would try to tweak things too much, you tweak your lights, you know, you tweak your all, and, and I think all this tweaking ends up stressing the corals out. I think that. Uh, if I were to give somebody some advice, I would say that stability is the number one key. Don't go around chasing parameters, you know, just try to maintain a stable environment. You know, pick some some parameters and go with it. Pick a light schedule and go with it, you know, and, and uh, sometimes all these electronics that we have give us uh, too much tweakability, I guess. And, uh, you know, sometimes you go around chasing things, you know, you hear about the, the next hottest thing and you want to implement it in your tank because you see so many people are are doing so well. I would say just pick something and, and, and try to maintain that stability. After reading Ecotech's uh, report, uh, their, their Coral Lab uh, report, it was actually with my old lights. I went ahead and implemented their uh, their new schedule that they have and uh, and I've stuck with it. And it seems like it's, uh, it's been done, done doing pretty well. When I changed to the Gen uh, 4 Pros, it, it took a little bit to get used to the, uh, the, the color change. I guess you're used to seeing something for such a long time that uh, it looked a little odd and I wanted it to play around with it, but uh, but I left it the way it was and, and it seems to be working pretty well. As far as flow goes, I run uh, mostly ReefQuest. I have a couple of periods of, of low flow throughout the day. I think I have maybe three or four, one or two hour periods of low flow. Most of the time it's uh, ReefQuest, probably around 90%. And uh, two times a day I run their tidal swell mode, just to kind of change up the flow and, and, and I guess, you know, provide some uh, turbulent and, and some peaceful times uh, in, in the uh, in the tank. Uh, once again, my name is Henry. I want to thank everybody for visiting, uh, uh, coming to check out my Elos 160, uh, and uh, have a great day.